Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. The melodic minor sound is probably the most characteristic scale sound in modern jazz. In this video I'm going to take a melodic minor scale and then I'm quickly going to cover some of the basic things you need to know and be able to play in that scale and then I'm going to give you three less common structures and show you how you can tap into some more refreshing melodic ideas using those things in some licks. If you want to check out more videos on jazz guitar, learn something about jazz phrasing and improvising over chord progressions, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. To keep it simple, all the examples in this video are using the A melodic minor scale, which you can play like this. If you want to use this scale when you're improvising, you probably want to check it out in more positions than one, but I'm going to leave that out now because otherwise the video is going to get really long. Another thing you want to check out is actually to know what kind of harmony is contained in this scale. And uh, there are two things you want to check out with that. The first one would be to learn the diatonic triads, so that could be this. Keep in mind that it's not enough to be able to play the triads like this, because most of us can do that by ear when we're playing in a position. But you also want to know what triads are in there, because that's going to be very useful if you later want to superimpose them on other chords. So be aware that you're playing like A minor triad, B minor, C augmented, D major, E major, F sharp diminished, G sharp diminished, and then A minor, so on and so forth. This is important information because you need that when you're relating everything that you play in here to another chord that you might be using it on. The same goes for learning the diatonic seventh chord arpeggios. That would be this. Besides knowing the basics like the notes of the scale, the diatonic triads and seventh chords, you can also start to look for some structures that are going to give you some more interesting melodies. One of the first places you want to look is probably chordal harmony. So just to make it a little bit more playable, uh, I'm going to show you the chordal harmony of the A minor melodic, but then I'm going to do it uh, along the neck and not in a position because it's a little bit easier to play. That would be this. Chordal harmony is really what you get if you start stacking fourth intervals in the scale. And uh, if you do that in the position, then you would go up four notes, so that means that you would go from, if you start on the A, the fourth note up is a D, and then four more notes up would be a G sharp, and you would have. Of course, if I play that on, uh, on the string set here, then it's a little bit easier, because if I know how to play my scales on each string, then I can just move the structure up note for note. thinking of the scale of each string. And what you will notice here is that some of the structures are going to be just stacks of perfect fours, like this one and this one. Some of them are going to be a little bit more strange because we have some other intervals in melodic minor, so the one found on G-sharp is actually a G-sharp 7 shell voicing, and the one on uh, A is going to be a fourth and then an augmented fourth, giving us this sort of minor 13 type sound. Of course, you can play these in position as well. That would be something like this. The sus4 triad is another structure with a very specific sound that's worthwhile checking out. You can get some really interesting sort of signal sounding lines with just the arpeggio, really. And if you want to check that out, essentially what we're doing here is we're taking the scale, then we're playing one, four, and five. And in that way, you get a certain sound of structure, and then we're going to take that through the scale. And I'm going to do that on the G and B strings, that sounds like this. With the SOS4 triads, it can also be very useful to check out how they sound as chords. That would be this. Besides playing the triads just as diatonic triads and inversions of triads, it can also be really useful to check out the open voice or spread triads. The great thing about those is that they contain two large intervals because you have a diatonic fifth and a diatonic sixth involved. If I play the diatonic spread triads through the scale, that sounds like this. And 
of course these are the root position. You can also check them out in inversions. The first inversion would be this one. And the second inversion would be this one. And of course I'm checking out the spread triads along the neck, but it's also a really good exercise to check them out in position if for no other reason than just learning the notes of all the triads. That could be something like this. The first example is starting with two sus4 triads. So I'm really just using the exercise that I went over. So I start with an E sus4, then I move down one degree in the scale to the D sus sharp4. From here I go into some uh, diatonic 7th chord arpeggio, so I take an A minor major, and then a C major 7 sharp 5, and then I'm skipping up to the F sharp and ending on the major 7. The opening of the second example is using an A minor triad as a spread first inversion triad, that's this. From here I go into an E major triad and I'm using an E major D major triad pair. So that's E major first inversion, D major root position and then another E major and first inversion. And then a small scale one and the ending on the 9. The third example is using some chordal arpeggios. The first one is the one from G sharp, which in A melodic minor is the same as a G sharp 7 shell voicing. From here I continue with the chordal arpeggio from E, but now I'm playing it on two strings, so with a bit of a stretch. Then I'm running down the scale, skipping down to the fifth E, and then encircling the G sharp. And then on the G-sharp I'm adding an open voiced E major triad. And then resolving and ending the line on the 6th, so the F-sharp. Besides being great for making some more interesting melodies with the melodic minor scale, these exercises are also a very good workout for your right hand technique, because there's a lot of one note per string happening, and that can be quite difficult if you're relying a lot on also the picking. It's also useful to get a better overview of not only the melodic minor scale, but just the fretboard and what notes are on there as a whole. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday and I've been doing this for quite some time, so there's a lot of material available already. If you want to help me keep making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's through the support of my patrons that I can keep on making videos every week. I'm very grateful for that and it's of course also nice that I get some interesting feedback and that I can give something in return for the support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.